Good evening, everybody. This is Allison Kapuscinski, Wallingford Town Engineer. I'd like to thank you for attending our public information meeting for the replacement of North Northford Road Bridge over the Muddy River. The town has hired WMC consulting engineers to complete the design and permitting of the bridge replacement. Tonight, we have John Wangle, project manager, who will be giving a presentation about the proposed project. There will be a time for questions and comments at the end. Feel free to send in your questions using the chat feature to username Jay Costello, and we will read them into the recording and answer them uh, tonight. Additionally, this, pro this presentation is being recorded and will be made available on the town website for the duration of the question and comment period, which will end December 21st, two weeks from tonight. With that, I'd like to turn it over to John. Good evening, everybody. My name is John Wengel, and I'm from WMC Engineers. And as Allison said, we're the design firm uh, and it's been hired to design the bridge. So let me start my slideshow. Just give me a second to get this going. So this is the public information meeting for bridge number 04832. It's the replacement of Northward Road Bridge over the Muddy River in Wallingford, Connecticut. As Allison just mentioned, we were hired by the town of Wallingford for consulting services on this project. Bridge 04832 is located just south of the McKenzie Reservoir Dam. This is a large scale USGS map, just so everyone can kind of get an idea of where it is and location to the, the city of Wallingford. As you can see up to the upper left, you have East Wallingford and the Wallingford downtown area. This is a blow up aerial view more localized around the site, where you can see the McKenzie Reservoir, the spillway, and then in the lower side of the screen, you'll see the bridge, uh, the Northford Road Bridge over the Muddy River. Looking north from the bridge, this is what Northford Road looks like. To our left, you'll see Tyler Mill Road entrance. To the right by the hydrant is the access to the dam. Looking south from the bridge, you can look up the hill, you'll see the retaining wall to your left and the, the grade of the road rises from the, that intersection. Looking at the upstream bridge elevation, this is what the bridge looks like in elevation view. This is the upstream side, so we're looking downstream. Now we're looking upstream. So this is what the channel looks like looking upstream from that location. This is the downstream bridge elevation, and it might be hard to tell, but you can see some concrete spalls there on the uh, parapets, which are we're going to try to fix when we do this, or we will fix when we do this bridge. Now we're looking downstream from the bridge itself. The existing bridge was um, 04832 as a Condot inspection report, which was done in January 29th of 2019. It's a steel beam bridge built in approximately 1938. Currently, the DOT inspection report was rated this bridge in serious condition, the superstructure in serious condition, the substructures in satisfactory condition. The overall structural evaluation requires high priority of corrective action. Now, the bridge is safe, but it warrants replacement. That's where the town is going. They're looking at design services and we're looking at replacing this bridge. Our project goals would be the replacement of the bridge, reduce flooding and improve hydraulics at the bridge site. We improve safety on Northford Road, minimize disturbance to the traveling public, complete the construction with the anticipated schedule and obtain and effectively use available funding. This is the underside of the bridge. As I mentioned, it's a steel, bridge, uh, steel beam bridge that uses corrugated metal piping between the steel beams for the formwork of the deck slab. If you take a look, you can see the, the white icicles, that's efflorescence leaching down from the bridge. Condition of the concrete parapet is pretty typical. It's been spalling off over the years of use. It's in pretty rough shape. Bridge wing walls. Typical spalling, as you can see some cracks in there. So this is typical of the substructure. 
Our project is located in a FEMA flood zone, an AA flood zone with an adopt, adopt, uh, excuse me, adopt, adopted regulatory floodway. We've also are within an area considered by the DEP for natural diversity and database. So there's some endangered species and or threatened species that will add correspondence to the group about concerning this project. I'll get into that a little later. Some of our environmental considerations for this project. We have consulted with DEP Fisheries for this project. We received some coordination on 9-17 of 2020. Our project was deemed not to significantly impact any fisheries and or habitat. And we've included all their fisheries enhancement in our design. NDDB or the DEP state listed species. We have, we have a response from them on November 29th of 2020. There are some species of concern that we are going to follow the recommendations outlined by DEEP to protect those species. We have no known contaminated soils within the project limits. There's no known hazardous materials within the project limits. Best management practices, also known as BMPs, will be utilized during construction. All our disturbed areas will be restored upon completion. Our town, our local DEP, and Army Corps environmental permits will be acquired. Our proposed construction, we need to plan to do a full replacement with a 40-foot clear span, pre-stressed pre deck unit superstructure supported by integral abutments and cantilevered U-type wing walls. Our substructure will be founded on micro piles rock, sided, rock socketed into bedrock. We are slightly going to increase the out-to-out -out width from 28 feet 9 inches to 32 feet 6 inches. This will provide two 12-foot lanes, two two-foot plus shoulders. Now when I say two foot plus, one side's a little bit wider. I think it's two feet six inches than the other side. And that's primarily because as we cross the bridge, the road starts to curve. So for us to maintain um, a proper shoulder without getting less than two feet, we made one side a little bit wider. We plan on removing our existing concrete abutment and wing walls one foot below grade and install rounded riprap on the embankment protection. We, are, we'll, we will be maintaining existing channel grades. This is a proposed roadway construction plan. The green, rep, the green represents our fill limits where we're going to be establishing turf and road, um, roadside vegetation. We have cut limits are mostly noted at the bridge where we're going to be excavating the historic fill within the wetland and water course as we excavate for our larger span bridge. Our water course is shown there in blue. The yellow represents the areas of proposed pavement and the gray is the existing pavement. There's about 320 feet of roadway reconstruction in this project. We also are gonna install a new approach guide rail to the project. As I mentioned earlier, we're trying to reduce some of the flooding at the site. Currently, we have raised the profile, I believe about six inches at the low point. This is a vertically exaggerated view. And if you notice there, there's two of the colors that look orange on the screen, but one is a little bit uh, paler, which is actually the excavation removal areas. And then we have the concrete structure in orange. The green is the fill of the roadway. Our goal is to improve the hydraulics past a 50 year storm Post construction of our elevation view. This is a more non vertical, exaggerated plan. As you can see, in the red there, it's where the existing bridge abutments are. Our goal is to remove those below grade and remove all the embankment fill that's behind those existing abutments up to our new proposed 40 foot span. We want to leave the existing substructure beneath the grade because the disturbance, to remove that, we're trying to minimize the disturbance to the wetlands and water course. So we're gonna leave the existing footings in below grade. 
A bridge section view, which is pretty much like slicing a sandwich. This is what the bridge will look like. We have the two 12 foot lanes I alluded to earlier with the two two foot shoulders. So we'll have a total of uh, 32 feet, six inches out to out. There will be new bridge rail on the bridge. Construction staging. We'll install the ENS controls. And as I get to the next slide, you'll see the plans. There's gonna be a, a rock vein installed downstream of this bridge. After that's complete, we plan on installing a debris shield and removing the existing superstructure. We'd like to construct the new abutments and wing walls behind the existing substructure, utilizing them for water handling purposes. After that substructure is complete, we're gonna install temporary water handling coffer dams on the water side of the existing substructure and remove the existing abutments and wing walls below grade. After that's removed, we are gonna install channel boulders along the river bank and fill the, new, the newly graded embankments with a rounded stone riprap. Then we'll be able to remove the coffer dams and install the bridge beams. After that's complete, all the remaining roadway and bridge work will be finished. So as I mentioned earlier, the water handling. Now, if you notice downstream to the bottom side of the page, there's a rock vein that we'll be installing. This is a DEP fisheries request. This is to help keep the thermal regulation between the two different rivers, just because just south of here, there's a small unnamed river that comes in underneath Tyler Mill Road, and DEP wants to kind of use this as a thermal refuge for the fish. So after that's complete, we are gonna go back and install the coffer damming, maintaining the water in the foul leg of the channel as we do the embankment and riprap work. There will be a detour for Northford Road during construction. The road will be closed. We are planning to leave Tyler Road open during construction. There will be some minor um, issues when we're doing the roadway reconstruction. We're gonna have to limit traffic through there, but generally we'll be keeping the road open to traffic while the bridge is being constructed. Public utilities consist of overhead wires and underground water mains. The overhead utility wires and poles within the project will have to be temporarily relocated during the construction. Water mains are not anticipated to be disturbed during construction and both utility companies and the other utility companies such as cable and electric will all be notified of a, I'm sorry, excuse me, a utility meeting which we plan on having in early January. There will be some rights easements and minor acquisitions as part of this project. However, the way the project's laid out currently, all the impacts will be on land owned by the town of Wallingford. Our project costs for this project are $2.4 million. The goal is to start construction in the spring of 2022, and the duration of the project will be eight months. Allison Kapuscinski, the town engineer from Wallingford, is a contact information for the town. Myself, John Wengel, contact information for me. Thank you, and I'll do some question and answers, and I just wanna note that the town will be accepting comments to December 21st, 2020. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and go over to the chat room and answer some questions if there are any. Also, feel free to unmute your, unmute your microphone if you'd rather just ask your question that way. Chat or, or microphone works. A question came in through the chat room. Will the entire cost be covered by the state or is there a local share? Currently, the town is seeking lots of funding. 
And Allison, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, our lots of funding will be, um, we are anticipating that they will cover 100% of construction costs. And on the flip side of that, uh, when you go for lots of funding, the town is required to pay for all design and permitting services. So the town um, had bonded a million dollars in order to pay for the engineering firm and also any construction costs if needed. Um, but since we are going for lots of funding, we are expecting 100% of construction costs to be covered by lots of funding. Second question, Camia says, are you considering phase construction one side of the bridge at a time to avoid closing the bridge in the road? We are not considering at this time to phase the road to allow traffic through. Well, those questions are coming in, so just let me poke, bear with me for a second. Okay. I have a question. It says, is the bridge decking height going to be raised higher than it is now over the water? Because there's severe rainstorms. There's often times when the water is almost to the underneath of, of the decking. Yes, we will be raising the road to accommodate the 50 year storm. However, raising a farther to accommodate the 100 year storm would be raising that intersection quite high and cause a lot of other impacts. There was a question about, can you elaborate on endangered or threatened species? Yes, there are two endangered species out there that the DEP are aware of, and the recommendations will be incorporated into our bid documents. The question is, are we planning to go before the Inland Wetlands Commission in the near future? Yes, we are on schedule to do a presentation for them on January 6, 2021. There's a question, will the corner of Tyler Mill Road and Northford Road be left like it is now for horse trailer parking after the bridge is done? Yes, there's a gravel parking area there now. We are maintaining that in the proposed construction. There was a question about for the listed species from deep, there are actually five in the riparian zone south of the bridge. Did DEP have that information? DEP provided a letter with two species that are known to them. There are also species that they want us to do some research with, this, uh, with the town of Wallingford. So we'll be doing that, but they did not mention five. They only mentioned two.
If anyone wants to unmute and ask questions, if their mic works, we'll be happy to take, um, in case typing is, is taking too long for people. question asks, what type of sides will the bridge have? The concrete has significant spalling now from the road salt and the, col and the culvert bridge on Tyler Road. There has the same issue. We are planning to install a concrete form liner to simulate stone at the project for the exposed faces of the concrete. There is a sealer that we will be, will be applying to that concrete to minimize the spoil the salt issues that we have with concrete. So we'll be sealing the roadside face and the bridge parapets with that sealer. Also, if you want to wait another minute or two, see if any other questions pop up. Yeah, yeah, we could stick around for another, you know, I five or so minutes. I stick it a couple some time to write some of the questions. So <clears throat> I think I've addressed everyone's questions so far. And skip over any. And I would like to remind everybody here and also anybody listening on the recording that the question and comment period is open until December 21st. So please feel free to contact the engineering department and ask for myself, Allison, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, so I have no further questions coming in. So um, I guess if any additional questions come in, you could forward them to us. Absolutely. Great. All right, I'm gonna um, thank everyone for showing up tonight and asking your questions. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. And thank you, John. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.